it was a privilege, an opportunity to serve the country. Uh, but it's even a bigger privilege to serve the country under this, this president. Um, I, I was his finance minister uh, in 2010 and 2011, and now Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. He actually expanded and created this ministry. It used to be called Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry. Uh, he changed it to Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment because of his focus on attracting investments into the country. So I think it's right to start from that angle. Today, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, the name Nigeria comes out in the ONTAG ranking. And Nigeria today is regarded as the number one destination for investment in Africa. Um, it's the first time Nigeria will achieve that. Uh, today we have more than 100 billion pipeline investments coming to the country across all sectors of the economy and from different parts of the world. It is this investment that is driving jobs into all sectors. So if we look at petrochemical, for example, we have about 14 billion pipeline investment coming there. If you look at sugar cane to sugar, we have about $3 billion coming there. If you look at cement, we've attracted more than $6.8 billion into that sector. And we've created about 100, 1.6 million jobs. Now, let's move on to um, industrialization. We were, for decades, a country that relied on exporting raw materials and importing finished products. So it, it just did not work well for the economy. The interesting thing about this plan is that it looks at areas of competitiveness, enablers. So we must have affordable finance, it looks at affordable finance, industrial skills, standards, infrastructure, and all that. There are about seven items. As a result of implementing that policy, not just developing, but now implementing it, let's take a few sectors, for example. Now we have sugar cane to sugar policy. As a result of that, three billion pipeline investment come into that sector in 10 states of the Federation, and over the next three to four years, we'll create about 200,000 jobs. If you look at the area of uh, automobile, for example, that policy was launched on the 2nd of, on the 2nd of October 2013. It was, it, we started implementing it on the 1st of July. Today, we have about 22 OEMs that are committed to assembling cars in the country. Within a week of announcing the policy, we had the likes of Nissan, Hyundai, and the others committed to assembling. And today they have started assembling cars in the, in the country. I use one of the Nissan cars, for example. Our own local producers, like Innocent, have expanded with, with international partners working with them. He has just produced a car that has about 40% local content. Let me move on to the SME sector. That sector was overlooked. Nobody cared about it for decades. Also, we did a survey when we came on board. We said, yes, there were 17.25 7 million SMEs in the country, employing 32 million people, and only eight of them had access to finance. We came up with a new program called NEDIF, which is a national enterprise development program, which addresses all the issues they have. The first thing we did, the president did, was to create the, the National SME Council for coordinating all the issues to do with SMEs in the country. That is the biggest employer of labor. Today we're talking about UWIN program, it's one of the programs. Uh, we have created about 55,000 cooperatives, all of them come from each local government, and that has about 855,000 members. Again, as part of focusing on that sector. Um, you, you know about the 220 billion fund, which has been made available, and this is targeting the micro, small and medium enterprises. In the area of trade, uh, Nigeria has become, you know, Nigeria chaired the World Trade uh, WTO meeting, MCAs, in Geneva in, in 2011. It was a very successful meeting. Played a big role in the Bali conference. Without Nigeria playing a major role in Africa, WTO would not have had the deal they had, and the first agreement they had in travel. Within ECOWAS, we've taken a leadership role. Today, we're talking about launching the CET for the region. We have a strong view on EPA, which we have always expressed. Again, when you talk about jobs, the president created the presidential job board. And what did we do as a government? Uh, for the first time, just for information, there were 69 million people in terms of workforce in the country. Every year, 
about 1.8 million people come to the market. It was this government, the first one, that came up with ways of measuring the level of unemployment, but more importantly, the way of measuring jobs created in the country. So today, for the fact I can tell you that we created close to about 1.2, 1.4 million jobs last year, but that's not enough. We need to create more. And that was why the president said the presidential job board. And the target is that, that we must create a minimum of 2 million jobs a year. We're targeting 3 million. And we're on target, on target to, to doing that. So there's a focus, deliberate focus on job creation. For the first time in the history of this country, we are working with UNIDO to produce that. Once that is now out, hopefully in the next month or two, we'll be able to use that. Our tertiary education, uh, our universities, our polytechnics, our training institutes, we'll be able to train people to work. And that will be a big game changer. So overall, as a ministry, we've had about 12 game changers and we have implemented close to about 65 reforms across the four different sectors. So the first thing is about jobs. The second area where you hit the lives of the average man is in the area of SME development. When you ask all those that have gone, that have beneficiaries of your win, they will not say what you're saying. They've received grants. They have been helped to start their business. They are not selling their, their products. They are employing people. If you ask those that have access money from BOI, BOI gave a loan in the last four years about 150 billion. It is to the average Nigerian that got the loan. And not down. As the people in cotton, cotton textile and garments, they have access to loan from BOI at 4% interest rate over 8 to 10 years. That means something to them. In the SME side, it, it, we're seeing significant growth in that sector. And we have so many ways of assisting them. One of them is a 220 billion fund we're talking about. The, the micros are unable to, to borrow money from banks because they don't have the collateral and all that. They can do this here through a different way, we've got bottom of pyramid program, where they cross guarantee each other and they are beginning to access that money. You know, so, so that's, that's how it touches the life of the average Nigerian. When you talk about trade, it's about trade facilitation. Today I was meeting with the market women to talk about domestic trade. How do we support them? We're organizing the market women also in the cooperatives, working with them to remove uh, barriers to, to, to trade and also to support them in terms of financing. So you must understand the issues first of all, and they will have the institutional framework to support them today more than any other time. That's why just jobs are now being created. And one important point the president has always raised. The president has said in this administration, one of the key things he wants to build, he wants to build institutions. And that has informed the way we appoint DGs to different power status. That has informed the way we structure ministry and structure what we do. I'll give you an example of what he has done. If let's take the issue of uh, people talk about political corruption or corruption. Without the steps the president took, where everyone is excited today about the next election. Because people believe today that their votes count. And that is the biggest corruption in the country. So it's about addressing institutions and doing that. And I think this country, this administration has done far better than any other in terms of building administration, making sure that we have sustainable programs. He is indeed a listening person. There's no doubt about that. Do you hear that? Again, I, you asked me, I said it was, it's been an opportunity and a privilege to work for him in two different roles. Finance Minister, Minister of, uh, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. I have been with him at two years. I've been with him at four years. Especially when I was Finance Minister. I've been with him at seven years. I've been with him at different all times and I know him. Now, and, and the question, and, and my, what I get, what I see, so it's not from afar, I can tell you the first thing that impressed me mostly about him is that at any particular time, on any issue you bring to him, 
his first natural instinct is to do the right thing for the country. Not politically tainted, nothing. His values are so strong when it gets to him. And all you need to do is appeal to his reason. No, no, he, he can see through. He, he can see through what you're talking about. But his first, I can guarantee you that take any issue to this president, Dr. Buller, Billy Jonathan, his first natural instinct is to do what is right for the country. And that is critical. Not to do what is right for him, not for you, not for party, not for anything. It is what, no matter who is affected, his first instinct is always to do what is right for the country. The second thing is that he's incredibly hardworking. None of their odds will be able to achieve what we have achieved without his support. So it's, it's a person you can always count on. And I have no doubt, in working with him, I have no doubt that even if I don't see him for weeks and all that, I know that you, all you need, just do the right thing. His natural instinct is about what is best for the country. And he's deeply, deeply interested in the development of this country.